Hello everyone. In today's session, I really wanted to focus more on the business policy and the quality of service aspect of the solution. Uh, and I know I'm sure I've uh, you know shown you this before, but I think it's critical for us to understand how things work and what settings we have available in order to influence the SD1 solution. So before we go further, and I'll show you how things look like in the orchestrator. I wanted to take a bit of time to explain how the edge processes packets. So first of all, we uh, look inside the routing table. So this is where uh, the box itself decides uh, if to use the underlay to root, uh, the overlay, um, you know, if it follows the overlay, uh, should it follow uh, a specific cloud VPN route or should it follow a cloud gateway as a default route? Uh, remember that um, you can peer the edge with the MPLS directly via BGP. Uh, thus, you might have multiple ways to communicate between your branches uh, and the ones that don't have uh, edge uh, deployed. Once the box decides on this, it will go ahead and do a bit of application recognition. Now, this is where we use the Cosmos engine to identify more than 3,000 apps. And we do that by, uh, you know, looking inside the headers, the host name, uh, looking at app heuristics, etc. I remember that, uh, you know, if the app is bespoke, uh, you can uh, mark it inside the orchestrator uh, so it can get recognized. Now, once we know where uh, the app is heading and what the app actually is, uh, this is where the business policy kicks in. I put in uh, here firewall as well because uh, the latest versions of code have a full-blown layer 7 stateful firewall. So uh, uh, if you choose to do so, you can actually start uh, blocking apps uh, not just allow everything to flow out. Now, today we're going to be focusing on the business policy aspects. And uh, with it, uh, it's quite simple because uh, we will have a uh, match plus uh, action sequence. So let me show you how this uh, can be configured inside uh, the orchestrator. Now, we'll do this uh, inside the profile. So the profile is the template that we can associate multiple sites with. And inside the profile, you see a tab called Business Policy. Now, there are lots of things uh, defined here. Uh, but remember that uh, each edge comes with uh, smart defaults. Um, I didn't actually add most of them here. Uh, they are the defaults. And this is a nice touch from VeloCloud because anybody who uh, would start deploying the solution already is halfway there. Remember, most businesses, for example, uh, would like their business applications to be uh, prioritized. This works like a regular firewall. So what tends to happen is that the box will process these sequentially. And once it finds a particular app, once it matches it, it will apply the policy and then move on to something else. So as you would uh, construct a firewall rule, with more specific items on top and less specific items on the bottom here, um, make sure that the business policies are constructed the same. I wanted to also emphasize that uh, with uh, the idea of segments, so an edge can have up to 16 of segments. So, um, you know, imagine there are VRF slides, right? So you can have 16 um, virtual instances of the edge, each with its own routing table. Uh, each of these segments can have its own business policies. So if you have contractors, guests, IoT devices, etc., you can build bespoke rules for each of them. So let me uh, click on any of these, and uh, I'll show you how the policy is constructed. First of all, we have a name. Then we have to match based on uh, the source. So this is where the packet comes from. Uh, quite useful to specify the VLAN or a certain IP address or a port. We can even specify the operating system of the device initiating the traffic. Once we do that, we can then um, choose the destination. 
So uh, this is traffic going to the internet, for example, or to a different edge across the cloud VPN or um, uses a certain port or host name or the application itself. So this is the, the list of the 3000 plus apps um, that come um, with the edge. Once we define the match criteria, we need to tell the system how to behave when it sees that particular app. Remember that uh, if we um, save changes on a network that's already up and running, that will not affect existing flows. That will only apply to uh, the new flows that run to the box after you have clicked save and um, the settings get loaded on the edge. You'll have uh, here the idea of uh, priority and of service class. Now, this is extremely important because with VeloCloud, uh, you get uh, nine classes of service. So it's a three by three matrix based on the priority and uh, class. And each of these um, nine classes has a weight that sums to 100. So what does this mean? This means that under contention, business collaboration apps have access guaranteed to 35% of the link bandwidth. In case there are no contention, uh, obviously they can burst up to the link capacity. Um, and another uh, important thing not shown on this diagram is that the remediation techniques that we do so if you remember, we do negative acknowledgments, jitter buffer, duplicate packets, don't apply to the classes marked as low. And it's obvious um, in case things go wrong, uh, you'd rather not prioritize and spend time uh, trying to save things such as games or social media. Our recommendation is obviously be very thorough with all the apps that you see uh, and uh, try to make sure that the apps that are really important really, really important, they always go to high. Do not put most of the things in high and normal because in that case, uh, then the box will have trouble prioritizing the super critical apps when congestion occurs. Once we define this, we can also uh, rate limit each app, outbound and inbound based on the percentage uh, of the link bandwidth, and then tell the edge how to uh, forward it. First of all, uh, there is the direct option. So this is unencapsulated, um, straight on the underlay. Um, the great example would be uh, direct internet access. You can use uh, the gateways as uh, multipath, right? So anytime you, uh, for example, have a critical software as a service app, uh, you can use the gateways and the MPO as close as possible to that particular location. Right, and the difference between direct internet access and using the MPO and gateways is just by shifting from direct to multipath. And then you have uh, the option of internet backhaul. So in this case, if you want to send traffic to um, any sort of third party, whatever that's a um, third party firewall or uh, even things such as Zscaler, you'd use that option. Now, once we decide how to send the traffic, we also need to decide on what links we do because an edge can have multiple links and multiple overlays to the same destination. We recommend leaving it on auto because this means that the MPO fully kicks in, it has all the links available, it can then aggregate, remedy, etc. But it's really up to you if you want to prefer certain links over the other. Obviously, you can do it on the interface, but I think the easiest way is to do it on transport group. So if you have, for example, multiple interfaces that lead to different MPLS providers, uh, you can all mark them with uh, private wired. And in this case, you can say, hey, I want my uh, guest traffic to go on my public links, and I want to make this mandatory. And this means that in case the public links fail, if I have any sort of private ones, I will never push traffic down that route. Why would I don't want to do that? Well, you know, the, the link might be too small uh, or it might be very expensive. And in this particular example, 
I don't really want to do that for something as unimportant as guest traffic. I can mark it as available, and this means that I will always prefer a certain link or transport, and if the link goes down altogether, use the rest of the available options. And this um, resembles the traditional way that we used to do routing, right? We used to have a certain circuit as active, we had another one on standby, and in case the active failed altogether, then we'd move the traffic on the standby one. Obviously, with SD1, we can now um, do smarter things. So we can, for example, understand the health of the links and then make a decision based on this. So this is where this idea of preferred kicks in. Because, for example, for this sort of traffic, I can say, hey, if the quality of service parameters go worse than what I have defined, then shift to the other link. So this is where the box will actually use quality of service parameters to make a decision instead of the link being up or down. One last thing to note here is that, um, you know, by default, uh, we tend to mark uh, with zero um, all the outer headers of uh, the overlays, right? So we encapsulate everything in VCMP, we protect to IPsec, and then we obviously have a a sequence number and a timestamp. And the reason that we mark everything with uh, DACP0 is because DMPO in itself can guarantee the quality of um, experience. You can choose, obviously, to uh, copy um, or set your own DACP values. So, for example, if you are crossing an MPLS provider and they have uh, certain QoS mechanisms, um, you can enable uh, them to be used by making sure that the you know the outer packet has the same marking as the inner one. However, be very mindful because uh, when the MPLS provider does its own quality of service and uh, um, that can actually alter the way that the packets get delivered on the other end, and then the MPO might actually think that the link is worse than it actually is. So that's why why by default we don't usually um, like to um, make changes to this. Um, but you obviously need to be aware that this can be done. One of the other things that I wanted to emphasize is that the QS scheduler in the edges uh, does try to maintain fairness uh, between peers, uh, between segments, uh, you know, between multiple flows uh, in one class. So that's something that you don't need to define. That's something that is done automatically. Do remember that we also have a schedule on the interface itself, right? So the box is preparing to forward, but it needs to make sure that it doesn't oversubscribe the link. So when you configure uh, any edge, you have a few options to set the speed of each link. And you will do that under the overlay settings. So click Advanced. And you'll see here that you can uh, define the speed manually. We recommend doing that at the hub. And also, you can do that across uh, your MPLS circuits when you expect um, you know, the same speed and not much variation between uh, the speed on the contract and the real speed. But you can also choose to dynamically measure the bandwidth, either slow start or burst mode, depending on the link speed. Usually over 200 megs, we uh, look to configure it as slow and over 200 as burst. Now, why do we do that? It's because usually on public circuits, uh, the speed tends to fluctuate. So with this, the box itself will use the gateways or the hubs um, to measure uh, the speed every seven days. And if you want to uh, do it uh, way more frequently than that, you can click this dynamic bandwidth adjustment tab. This is extremely useful, uh, for example, for LTE links that tend to fluctuate the most. And this means that the box itself, once you go in uh, the monitor tab, will have um, usage stats when it comes to um, the bandwidth itself. And this is what the scheduler will follow uh, before sending traffic on the link itself. Now, before I stop, I did um, show you this uh, 
diagram here. It comes from a great book that I do uh, recommend you can download. It goes through all things regarding VeloCloud uh, SD WAN, and it's written by uh, the VeloCloud SCs themselves. Uh, so it's really rich in information. And you can find that by uh, following this link, velocloud.com slash SD-WAN resources. And once you scroll down, click on eBooks and iPapers, and you get to this link, SD-WAN 101. The book is free. You just need to drop in your credentials there. So do check this website because it has loads of cool information, including webinars and white papers. And again, the link is velocloud.com slash SD-WAN resources. See you next time.